one of the things that I really want to convey is to uh, raise the level of dialogue between patient and physician. Uh, I think too many uh, patients go into a, a hospital setting or a doctor's office, and especially when they get diagnosed with something that's quite serious, and they think that the physician is speaking a Mayan language and that they don't understand. So one of the things I want to do is try to make, in this case, cancer treatment and diagnosis and ongoing treatment of it more user-friendly uh, so that people have a kind of comfort level in talking to their doctors, asking the questions that they need to ask, being inquisitive about their own situation. Physicians so often, understandably, get locked in on, I've got to treat this person, I've got to unravel this mystery. And you have to think in a holistic fashion. You know, I'm, I'm treating the whole person here. And that includes their anxiety and their questions and all the other things. One of the things that happened to me is that they were very honest with me and very candid right off the bat. And as, uh, and as Dr. Gertz said, he said, because he knew who I was, you know, that I, I'm a trustee here, uh, I'm a journalist, that has something to do with it, I have a high profile. Uh, what, I was, what I was not prepared for was how hard it was going to be, about how painful it was going to be. Uh, when I first went from here back to New York, uh, you know, uh, I was uh, in an office with an oncologist, and then a lot of the kind of senior people at Sloan Kettering came in because they knew me or we had common friends, and they all said, oh, it's gonna be, you're going to be fine. You, you know, nine, ten months from now, you're going to be out there running around. Well, that wasn't the case, and I wasn't holding them responsible. What they didn't say was, it's going to be kind of tough. You know, you're going to have a lot of bone issue that you're not used to. And you're going to have to cut back in your life, Tom. You know, you're jumping on airplanes all the time and doing things all over the world. That's going to come to an end because we just, you're going to just have to concentrate on this. My wife understood that intuitively. And my daughter, who's a physician, really understood it. So that was helpful to me. I didn't always listen, but it was helpful. I left here with a diagnosis, and I did a really dumb thing. I had back issues, and I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. I, I flew to Montana, told my wife, it was a very difficult time for us. Got up the next morning, threw all my fly rods in the car and my waders, and drove 200 miles across Montana thinking I was going to go fishing just like life had not changed. And at the end of the second day, I was a pretzel of pain and had to come back. And it was at that point that I was in so much pain they had to medevac me and get me back here. Uh, so, you know, what I did was not be realistic about the condition that I was in. I don't think I was in denial as much as I was uh, I knew I had cancer. I knew I'd been diagnosed with it. I don't think I knew yet enough about the consequences of that cancer. I'm, I didn't think that the bone, I thought the bone damage would not get worse than it had been. I'd had lower back pain. But in the course of uh, three or four days, the pain radiated through my body. And, and it turned out I had uh, severe fractures in my spine. And, and I had a hole in my pelvis uh, and things that I had not known when I left here.